Greetings everybody, Chaplain Bob here. Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible. We're going to read the 54th chapter of Isaiah, starting in verse 1. This is the continuation of the Isaiah series. Okay, verse 1. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not break. I'm sorry, thou that didst, didst not bear. Uh, speaking of having children here. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. I'm kind of of the opinion, I could be wrong, but uh, I believe this is comparing divorced Israel with Judah that was not divorced. You could read about this in Jeremiah verse 3 and, I'm sorry, Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 8. Verse, okay, uh, Isaiah 54 and verse 2. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. Now remember, the Lord promised Abraham's children, Abraham and his children, that they would be the he would be the father of many nations, and that he would multiply his seed as the stars in heaven and as the sand on the seashore. Does a few million uh, you-know-whos in the Middle East fulfill that promise? I don't think so. Verse 3. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles. That word's nations. And make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. Hmm. The shame of thy youth. Is that referring to when they fell into apostasy? I think so. And what about widowhood? Well, wasn't Christ the husband? And wasn't he crucified and put to death? The husband died. She became a widow. In Jeremiah 31, 31, chapter 31 and verse 31, the Lord said he'd make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now remember, when the husband dies, the widow is free to remarry. But then Christ was resurrected on the third day and rose from the dead. Isn't that what the marriage supper of the Lamb is all about? I think so. Now, you got to remember, the Bible is the book of Adam via Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's the book of Israel and the love of her husband, which is Christ the King. That's what the Bible's basically all about. And the woman is the church, and the church is the woman. I know the uh, dispensational pre-trib Zio churches, so-called, will argue that, and then they want you to think that there's two brides, uh, but God's not a polygamist. At least I can't find it in Scripture, and they can't find it either. 
you know they'll they'll point things but when you get to the book of revelation when it talks about uh the woman the bride and the marriage supper of the lamb well there's only one bride there's not two or three or 13 you know the 12 tribes plus the gentile bride that just doesn't happen so all right isaiah 54 and verse 5. oh let's before we go there let's take a look at something else now remember in verse 4 it talked about being confounded well first peter 2 6 wherefore also it is contained in the scripture behold i lay in zion a chief cornerstone and that's what christ is right elect precious and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded all right so in jeremiah 31 31 behold the days come saith the lord that i will make a new covenant with the house of israel and with the house of judah not according to the covenant that i made with their fathers in the day that i took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of egypt which my covenant they break who broke the covenant they did not the lord which my covenant they break although i was an husband unto them saith the lord verse 33 but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. All right, back to Isaiah 54, verse 5. For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. Verse 6. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith thy God. Well, that was Jeremiah 3.8. Verse 7. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me, for as I have sworn, that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that hath mercy on thee. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not confirmed, and not comforted behold i will lay thy stones with fair colors and lay the foundations with sapphires now i believe that this is has a reference to new jerusalem mentioned in revelation chapter 21 uh, in verse 10 it says and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city the holy jerusalem descending out of heaven from God having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious even like a jasper stone clear as crystal and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gate 12 angels and names written thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel I don't see a 13th Gentile gate there do you I can't see it uh, let's see on the east gate uh, on the east three gates on the north three gates on the south three gates and on the west three gates and the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the name of the 12 apostles of the lamb 
Uh, let's skip down to verse 18. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. Now, a lot of people don't know it, but when you take something and align their molecules in a fashion like crystal, you could actually, it becomes clear like glass. Uh, have you ever heard of lead crystal? It's lead. I mean, lead is usually a dark grayish color, but lead crystal is clear. I used to love looking at that stuff when I was in Germany. They had lead crystal. So there's got to be gold crystal. I mean, there's got to be. Um, Star Trek had reference to uh, transparent aluminum. And I believe, I'm not sure, I believe that they've actually done that. Uh, once you crystallize something, the light will pass through it to a certain degree. So, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. Isn't that what we just read in Isaiah? Um, let's see, verse 12, and it says, I will make thy windows of a gates and thy gates of carbuncles and all thy borders of pleasant stones. Okay, so let's go back to Revelation 21, uh, 19. And the foundation of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth uh, chrysophorus. Oh boy. You could tell I didn't take ge geology in college, huh? The eleventh, a jacinth, the twelfth, an amethyst. Um... These were the stones for each one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, the priest wore a breastplate with these 12 stones on it. So, here it is. It's telling you. there. This is for Israel. Verse 21. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. Remember, the Lord said not to cast your pearls before swine. And the gates were 12 pearls. Verse 22, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. I thought I said that in John 8, 12. Oh yeah, I did. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, and there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter in it enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life alright let's go back to Isaiah 54 verse 13 and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and the great shall be the peace of thy children in righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, that for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Well, yeah, in the kingdom, that's definitely going to be fulfilled. Behold, they shall gather, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. So when the wicked ones gather themselves together in an army against the Lord's people, they're going to fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument 
for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. Do you know that Satan was uh, Satan was created good? But, you know, even Satan has his purpose to destroy the wicked. Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. See, this is, we're in a war. And I'm sick and tired of church people. I'd shudder to call them Christians, but I, I don't make those decisions. The Lord will. Uh, you know, oh, we're supposed to love everybody. Well, you know, why is why are we considered in, you know, considered soldiers in a war? You know, what am I supposed to do? Walk up to the enemy and put a flower down the barrel of their gun? And tell them I love you while they murder Christians? I mean, really? That thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. You see, these two blasphemed, and, and Paul had delivered them unto Satan. See, even Satan has his purpose. Now, before we finish, uh, we're not quite finished, but we're getting close. In Revelation 21, 9, and there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride. I will show thee the bride, not brides. There's not a Gentile bride, and then a, a Jewish bride. No, there's only one bride. I will show thee the bride bride the lamb's wife revelation 22 17 and the spirit and the and the bride say come and let him that heareth say come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take of the water of life freely you see it says bride not brides plural no now who is this bride well that's in Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go back to, let's go to Revelation 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman, a woman, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and under her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So the woman is figuratively Israel. You could also apply it to Mary when she gave birth to Christ. Didn't the dragon try to kill Herod, try to kill all of the baby Christ in Bethlehem, but Joseph was warmed in a dream to go flee to Egypt? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Who's this man-child? Christ. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score 
days. So remember this, verse 1. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Uh, wow, that's some symbolism, huh? So where is the interpretation of that? Simple. If you've never read the Old Testament, you'd never know. But it's in Genesis chapter 37. Who is this woman with the moon and the 12 stars? Simple. Uh, let's see. All right, Genesis 37 and verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. Behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. Obeisance means to bow down. And his brother, brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he, Joseph, and he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, listen carefully, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Now you had eleven stars plus Joseph makes twelve, right? Behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Listen to the interpretation. Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. So, who's the son? Jacob. Jacob was. I mean, you know. Jacob Israel. Who was the moon? The mother. Who were the 12 stars? The 12 tribes of Israel. The bride. I mean, you know, I mean, how can you, you know, if you've never read the Old Testament, you'd never catch that symbolism. And then the church people are told by their pastors, well, you know, that that Old Testament, that's for the you-know-whos. Don't read it. It's a waste of time. It doesn't apply to you. It's a different dispensation. Blah, 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 ad nauseum. So, and then when you read Revelation, you say, well, I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. Well, of course not. All right, let's go back to Isaiah 54. Verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Because most certainly, the righteousness of the Lord's servants is not from their works. That is for sure. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.